some storms. I've been through some rain. Thank you. 
your love, your joy, your peace to go with them wherever they are. Lord, right now, those that are depressed, those that are confused right now, Lord, God, I ask that you bring them understanding. Let them know that you are the God that knows the end from the beginning. On, and there's absolutely nothing that you can't do. My God, we're trusting you for it today. God, even though we come with all the faith that we have, we ask that you remove any doubt that's within us. Because even though we know that you can, sometimes we have a hard time believing that you'll do it for us, God. So God, I'm asking that you touch your people. Encourage us that we may be an encourager today, Lord. God, and even as we leave this place but not your presence, help us to take a word to somebody that don't know you today. God, and above everything today, I ask that you save a lost soul today, God. Because, Lord, we know that's what you came here for. You came to seek and save that which was lost. So today, Lord, we get out of the way. We ask that you do whatever it is that you came here to do. And the people of God will say amen. amen. Come on and say amen again. Amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus.
last selection, we would like to just encourage you just to keep on going, to keep on pushing. Because in the end, we win. In the end, God's name has to be glorified. And in the end, we must remain victorious all because of his promises. So whether you're going through a little turmoil, just remember Jesus will. He's keeping you. And something has to break. Thank you. 
Embrace the process. Embrace the process. Embrace the process. All month long we've been dealing with labor pains. Labor pains. The first Sunday, we're closing out the sermon series today. The first Sunday we talked about why me? Why do I have to go through so much pain? Second Sunday, we talked about stretch marks. Dealing with the afterbirth. Dealing with the, the things that have left some scars in our life. Uh, third Sunday, we talked about recovery. You know, the last thing you do after you give birth, you have to recover. But today we want to deal with the whole birthing process. Embrace the process. Embrace the process. See, when you find out that you're pregnant, when you find out that you're about to have a baby, have a baby most people, most people, they are excited. Then their body starts to expand. And they start to see all the weight. They get depressed. And then you find out what the sex of the baby is. It's a boy. It's a girl. And you get happy all over again. And then after a while, you start expanding. And you, you start expanding some more. And to the point, your feet swell, your body, you, you weigh uh, more than what you used to weigh. And now you're tired everywhere you go. You're ready to get through the process. And then one day, your water breaks. And now you're nervous. All these emotions happen. Excited, uh, you're tired now. You're nervous because your water has broken. Now it's time to push, it's time to labor in order for you to reveal what was once hidden inside of you. See, God, He privately prepares us before He publicly promotes us. Come on, come on, come on. I think I need to say that again. God, He privately prepares us before He publicly promotes us. The preparing is a process, but it's necessary for promotion. And, and, and most of the time, the process feels like waiting. Anybody feel like you're in the wait right now? You, you, you're expecting it. God, I just feel like the right job is coming. I, I know my husband is on the way. I, I can see the building, but when is it going to be mine? I, I, can smell breakthrough, but I'm still stuck in the wait. Something has to break. God, speed up this process for me. And God says, embrace the process. God, I hear what you're saying. Can you speed it up? And he says, embrace the process. Because you have to, in order for you to progress, you got to go through the process. You don't know why you're going through what you're going through, but it's part of the process. I'm sure Joseph wanted to skip the pit and the prison and, and go straight ahead to the palace, but he would, not have, he would not have made it to the palace if he did not go through the pit and the prison. In Hosea chapter 7 verse 8, uh, the prophet begins to speak to Ephraim. He says, Ephraim, he says, you are a half-baked cake. My God. Come on, come on. I said again. He says, Ephraim, he said, you are a half-baked cake. Come on. You look good on the outside. Come on now. But you're not ready on the inside. That, that there's some stuff that I got to do through you in order for you to be ready all the way through. Come on. See, when you lose focus, you also lose fire. Somebody here, you're tired right now. You lost focus. And therefore, your fire has dwindled. And God says, I gotta put some fire under you to make sure you're ready to, to, to go to the next level, to receive what I have for you. It's supposed to be hot. It is supposed to hurt. The heat kills bacteria. The heat kills infection. It's part of the process. In order for God to get out of you the things in order for you to go to the next level, he said, I'm going to put some heat under you because you're not ready on the inside. On the outside, you're faking it. But he said, I see your heart. You ain't ready for what I got for you. I got to put some heat under you. We have a now mentality. We have a 
Microwave mentality serving a crock pot God. My God. <laughs> and God says, I need some stuff to marinate. Come on, come on. For my cooks in here, my special those who barbecue and smoke and meat and stuff like you. Things are so much better when you let it marinate and let it, let it sit there a little while. And many of us, we want a microwave God, and God says, no, I don't operate, I'm a crock pot God. Come on. When I look at successful people throughout history, you know, we always we look at people's success, but we don't realize all the hell they went through to get to what they, where they are right now. You, you take a Walt Disney who went bankrupt many, many, many times, but all we see is Walt Disney Land. We see Disney World. We think he started out great, but no, he lost everything many times to get where he is and where he, what we see today. I tell people all the time, I, told, I was in revival this week, I said, so oftentimes we look on Facebook and we see my neighbor's driving this, my neighbor got this car, my neighbor has her husband or he has his wife, they're going on vacation. I said, that's the highlight reel. That's the highlight film. I, I said, if I would show you my football highlights, you would think I should be in the NFL right now. But that was, that, that, that's only 5% of what I did. If you look at the other 95%, you wonder why I was on the, on the bench a lot of the times. <laughs> Many times we want to show folk the highlights of our lives. Not even realizing that they're going through all kind of hell to keep what they have. <laughs> Comparison is the killer to your process. And I just need to liberate somebody in the house today. Stop comparing yourself to somebody else. Because somebody, that person that, you, that you're idolizing, they secretly want to give up. They secretly want to throw in the towel. They secretly want to get rid of the husband and the wife they have, but yet you want what they got. Paul, 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 Paul. We, we, we're talking about Paul today. And many of us know, other than Jesus Christ, Paul is probably one of the most influential persons in the New Testament. When we talk about Paul today, we talk about that anointed man of God who had power. I love preaching on Paul because Paul had some power. God used him mightily. The brother be walking by folk and his shadow would heal folk. I, I wish I had that kind of power. I'd be walking through the hospital room, put, just laying over people, my shadow. Paul had that kind of shadow. He would take his handkerchief and, and wipe the sweat from his brow and pass it around, and, and Paul would be healed just from the sweat of his brow. We talk about that Paul, but we don't talk about the Saul who once persecuted Christians. In order for him to go from Saul to Paul, it was a process. And like Paul, we all have a process we have to go through. Paul, Paul he, he was on his way to Damascus to persecute some Christians. Paul was a young man. He was going through the ranks. And when you read Galatians, the first part of Galatians, he'll tell you he was one of the baddest out there. He, Paul spoke 13 different languages. He, he was going through the ranks of, uh, of all the different colleges. He, he, he was a man among his peers, and, and, and they, they put him out there because he got the job done. And he was on his way to Damascus to, to persecute Christians. And while he's on the way, God knocked him off of whatever he was riding. And sometimes, on the process, God has to knock us off of our high horse. God has to bring us down to our knees. And while he's on his knees, while he's on the ground, God begins to speak to Saul. He says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Why are you doing this to me? Paul, Saul began to talk back to him. He said, how am I persecuting you? He said, God began to tell it's hard to keep against me. <laughs> and many of us will keep it against God. And we wonder why we're on our Damascus road right now. 
We're wondering why we're struggling right now because we're kicking against God. God began to tell, tell Saul, he said, I need you to go to Damascus and talk to this brother by the name of Ananias. Paul was blind for three days. And many of us, we can't see the vision. We can't see our purpose in life because we're not doing what God is telling us to do. But when he got there, Paul saw, made up in his mind, this God that just I had an encounter with, there's something different about him. He said, I, I, whatever it is you want me to do, I do it. And when Ananias, Ananias laid hands on him, he was able to see again. But watch what Paul did. Pa Paul, if you look in Galatians, the text that we're in today, he says that in verse 15, he says, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, when it pleased God, God will not allow you to finish a certain process until he's pleased with you. Many of us be walked out of the situation that we're in, but God said, I ain't through with you yet. I'm not pleased with you yet. He said, when it pleased God, he separated me from my mother's womb, and he, he called me by grace. He says, he said, after the Damascus Road experience, he said, I did not go to flesh and blood. In other words, he said, I didn't go to another man and tell them what God had told me. Because some people, they were not ready for what God had told Paul. Matter of fact, when Paul got up, he immediately started preaching. They was like, no, no, that's Paul. That, that's Saul. He's the kill folk. They began to bring up his past. They weren't ready to receive the gift. So he said, I did not go to flesh and blood. He said, I didn't even go to the apostles. He said, I went to Arabia. Yeah. I went to the desert. Yeah. For three years, Paul, he got along by himself. Because he understood that was a process. That, that there was some stuff that he was not ready for. He was half-baked. He, 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 from the outside, God had given him a word. But on the inside, God was still working on him. So he went to the desert for three long years. And when he got from the desert, he went back to Damascus. But it didn't stop the process. It didn't stop there. Paul was shipwrecked. They, they, they tried to stone Paul. Paul is preaching and teaching the gospel. And yet he gets bitten by a snake. He went through more and more persecution. Because in the process... There's pressure. And many of us, we don't like pressure. But the only way for you to become who God wants you to be, you got to go through some pressure. Uh, on my way here, I, 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 had, I got a, a lump of coal, but I lost it. I don't know where it is. But uh, in order for coal to become a diamond, because all a diamond is, is coal that's been under pressure. Yeah. All right. this, this diamond here was once coal. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that, that coal that we use to burn furnaces and barbecue with, and that, that same coal, if you put it, place it under pressure, right. it becomes a diamond. Yeah. And then many of us, we keep, we keep aborting mm. the pressure. together. <laughs> and and, and, and as, I, as I read that, I'm, 
I was, I was like, why did they call the king's horsemen and the king men to put Humpty Dumpty back together again? Many of us, we are going to folk asking folks to help us to put us back together again. All they had to do was go to the king and ask the king to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Stop going to folk. Stop going to flesh and blood. The flesh and blood can't do anything for you. Go to the king, the one who knows about what you're going through. Go to the king who knows how to fix you, who is your maker. I told you earlier, and I got up here. I said, we're closing out this sermon series talking about embracing the process. God, through this season, through this sermon series, he wants us to realize this one thing. That we all have to go through something to get to the finish line and become what he wants us to be. We all have to go through the process. It hurts, it's painful, oftentimes frustrating, but there's something in you, if you allow it to, it'll bounce back every single time. And I've told this story many times about my daughter who we were in the swimming pool and she asked me to blow up a ball for her and I blew it up and she said, Daddy, pull the ball under the water. And I grabbed the big ball and I pulled it under the water and, and we were playing with it under water. When I released it, it went back to the top. And she started crying. I said, baby, why are you crying? She said, why the, why the ball won't stay under the water? Daddy, I want it to stay, I don't want it to be on the top. I said, baby, there's something on the inside of this ball that no matter how hard you pull it down, My God. it won't stay down. It has to rise back to the top. There's something in you that won't let you stay down. But you got to go through the process. It's a transit, y'all. It has left the warehouse. It's out for delivery. I, I don't know. I don't know where it is for you. It, it, it can be right down the road. Matter of fact, it can be here right now, just waiting for you to surrender. I don't know. But he said it's in transit. But you got to embrace your process. So today, as we close out this sermon series, I want us to pray. We pray for one another. Lay hands on yourself. Say, God, I surrender all to you. If I'm the holdup, if I'm the reason, God, break my will. You have your way, God. I pray for you today that God will give you ears to hear his voice that in the breaking when a woman's water break there's contractions that baby wants to get out of there because there's so much pressure on it he contracts, he push the cause is not comfortable I pray that God will give you endurance to push so God, today we lift up our hands to you. We thank you for this sermon series. Because many of us in this season, we are dealing with labor pains. There are those that are watching us right now. They're in their hospital beds. I, I've seen your messages on Facebook Live. I, I, I see you. You're, you're watching us. You're at home. You're dealing with COVID. You're dealing with the struggles, the issues of life. But God, I want you to encourage that person and let them know it's part of the process of becoming. Strengthen them right now, God. Each and every person on the sound of my voice, God. God, I pray that you would lift the burden that they're feeling right now. The weight of the world that's on them. 
God will lift it off of them. God, any sin, reveal it to ourselves. Reveal it to us. Expose us to ourselves, God. Show us, God, the things that we need to get rid of. Show us the things, oh God, that we need to correct in our life. Because, God, we want to be that diamond. We're tired of being the cold. We're tired of taking the test over and over and over again. We want to be all that you want us to be. God, we thank you for your people. We thank you for your encouragement today. God, I thank you for every lost soul that's watching us live today. Let them know, God, that you can make them over again. God, you do the draw, and you save, you deliver, and you set free this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of our people say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Now, if there's somebody here today, somebody's watching us live, we want to give the invitation of discipleship for you to give your life to Christ. That is what we're here for salvation because whether or not you know it or not he's coming back again and he's coming back for prepared people that's the only people that will spend eternity with him in heaven so if you're not ready make the step of faith today say I want to give my life to Christ not my will, but his will be done. Salvation can be yours today. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that Jesus died for you. But early Sunday morning, he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. Your sins, my sins, he died for. You believe that salvation can be yours today. If that's you, we ask that you raise your hand. Say, I want to give my life to Christ. If you're watching this live, please send us a message so we can be in contact with you. Salvation, partnership. Say, I want to partner with GLF. I see the great work that you're doing. I feel God drawing me to this ministry. If that's you, raise your hand. Partnership. If you're not able to be here, you say, I want to partner. I can't be there right now because the season that we're in, raise your hand. You can send us a message. Raise your hand. Salvation, partnership, baptism. First Sunday, we will be baptizing. I think we have quite a few youth. Mm -hmm. Seven, eight, seven of our youth are going to be baptized on the first Sunday. And next month, if you want to be baptized, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together. We thank God for you. We thank God for you being here, those that are present, those that are here with us through live. We thank God for you. We want to give you an opportunity to worship through your giving, through your tithe, through your offering through the sowing of seed today. For those your first time here, if you're giving by way of cash or check, you give on the way out the door. Hospitality ministry will take your seed. You can give by way of cash out. The dollar sign, greater love than one. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into the kingdom of God. God, I believe there's somebody here today there. They want to yield and sow a seed, but they're hesitant because they're thinking about tomorrow. But God, I ask that you allow them to sow cheerfully into the kingdom of God. Many of us will struggle financially, not because you're not blessing us, but it's because we're not giving a portion back to what you, according to how you blessed us. We're holy. We're robbing you, God. 
God, you said in your word that when we rob you, you allow the kingdom worms to eat up our blessings. So God, we don't want that to happen. We don't want anything to, to take our blessing. So God, we give it back to you cheerfully. We sow it to the kingdom of God. God, we honor you today. Asking you to honor our seed today. Let it be a blessing to you, God. But most of all, a blessing to the kingdom. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Do we have any announcements? Any announcements? Thank all those who came out to worship with us yesterday at Evergreen. Here it was an awesome time in the name of Jesus the Christ. Great to love you represented. So we thank God for you. Thank God for your support, your partnership. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, look at another neighbor. Say, neighbor, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. May God bless you.